Good afternoon, everyone. Brian Farr here, VP Stock Analytics with Stock Dads. Another exciting day within the market. Another up day with the NASDAQ closing up 0.68%, the SP up 0.5%. Uh, a little bit of a laggard from the IWM small cap, still struggling to gain some traction. Uh, but overall, a, a pretty good day here, mainly from the mega cap sector once again mega caps continue to lead the way google new 52 week highs meta new 52 week highs zuckerberg with his farm there up in hawaii feeding them beer and macadamia nuts apparently this is not a new thing it was new to me but <laughs> so so it is uh, big wins today with microsoft we've been looking at that setup for a while now uh great wins overall uh, we even played Disney to the downside for a nice little gain uh, and as well had some good profit taking on Walmart. We were waiting for that one to break out into the gap. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. In other news, Bitcoin ETF at the bell finally releasing that SEC approval. So we get plenty of new spot ETF, Bitcoin ETFs coming onto the market. SIBO said that they will start trading tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. Bitcoin currently down 1.5%, uh, about 700 points as of right now. So let's get into it. This is the Daily Squeeze. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the bigger news of the day, which came in right at the bell. The SEC finally approves the spot Bitcoin ETF for the market, and we have plenty of financial institutions who have filed for those spot Bitcoin ETFs from BlackRock to Fidelity to VanEck, Wisdom Tree, Bitwise, etc. So there's actually uh, quite a few of these new Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, maybe, you know, I'm curious to know what. Gary Gensler's thought is because I know he's been very anti crypto uh, since his tenure. So I am curious to see uh, exactly or to hear what exactly, you know, what his thoughts are on this. But either way, the SEC has gone ahead and approved of these instruments. And, you know, what exactly does that mean for the uh crypto market well the the spot bitcoin etf will will allow uh investors to get in on an etf that basically tracks and trades the price of the actual uh bitcoin and it gets investors to have some exposure uh to the fluctuations of really the the largest uh, cryptocurrency out there in the world and you know what is interesting is that you know this this creates additional accessibility it also grants some maybe some regulatory clarity on bitcoin and you know in fact it, it could also bring about some positive and maybe an improved image of cryptocurrency because let's face it cryptocurrency doesn't always have the best reputation out there and the fact that we're getting a spot Bitcoin ETF approval and endorsed by the SEC might give uh, some of these asset managers uh, a much needed boost and credibility. So that in a nutshell is pretty much what it means for the crypto market. So it is a big deal. Uh, we are getting a little bit of a muted reaction here on Bitcoin, perhaps it's already priced in. That's a good question to, to ask. And I guess the next question to ask is, okay, when are we going to get an Ethereum uh, spot ETF? So I, I think that raises an important question. We now got Bitcoin, what about Ethereum? That's also one of the, uh, that's probably the, the second best known uh, crypto out there. Uh, a lot of people traded alongside with Bitcoin. So we'll keep an eye on that news, of course. Uh, but as of right now, yeah, pretty interesting stuff here with Bitcoin. Uh, now, if we do have a sell the news kind of event, I do expect that 40K uh, to hold up. If we decide to rally, uh, then I am looking at a 50,000 target for Bitcoin. But as it sits right now, a little bit of a muted 
uh, move here on on Bitcoin. We'll see how the overnight session uh, transpires. Now let's get into the broader markets here, starting out uh, with the ES S and P futures. The big battle today came. Uh, let me change this to the hourly time frame real quick. Uh, the big battle started out at this 4,800 level, which you can see here. Let me zoom in. 4,800 was our key resistance zone. We broke out of that early on, retested it, and continue to hold above it. So as long as 4,800 continues to hold, I think that bodes well for the overall market and sets us up to take on uh, the highs here at 4,840, uh, 4,850. So we definitely want to keep that in mind tomorrow we do have a big uh economic data day we get our inflation data which we are anticipating a 3.2 percent year over year which would be a slight increase from the prior reading and a 0.2 percent reading on the month over month uh reading so definitely pay attention to that that data will come in in the morning before the market open at 8:30. Uh, all eyes are going to be on it. Uh, this can be a, this will be a big market mover and can make or break some of these setups that, you know, we've been paying attention to. If it comes in hotter than expected, expect those yields to go up, the dollar to go up, uh, and that will create a headwind for the overall broader market assets. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, I did see that the put call ratio did get a little bit of an uptick towards the end of the bell, maybe some hedging coming in just in case. But, you know, based upon the market movement today, it seems that everything was is just moving in stride. Google, uh, new 52-week highs on the board. Same with Meta. Uh, Meta had a, an impressive move today, uh, breaking out above that key level that we talked about the other day, 361.90, we hit that high of 373, right at 373, which cleared all of my targets. So congrats if you played Meta uh, based on our analysis. Uh, one of the biggest players today that I am excited about was Microsoft. Microsoft finally uh, broke out of this 376 level and hit just shy of the lifetime highs at 384. Once we started to move early in the morning, I went ahead and added into my position uh, that we originally entered in on, on December 20th. So well before Christmas, well before the new year, we, we front, front ran this, but the structure was good. We even pulled back and tested the all-time high at 366, held on to it, held the daily 50. And since then, we have rocketed up. And the position has paid out uh, very well here. Uh, we averaged down to $4.30. We close those out for $7 for 63%. Now, if we do get a nice little run up here on Microsoft, what I am looking to do is take a new position here, but I'm going to be looking at the 400 contracts for February, the monthly expirations. And the reason why I'm looking at that is because if we take this breakout level, our overall target is going to be that 40570, and the February contracts would give us uh, some time on that. If need be, we can also look at the March contract. So overall, Microsoft looks fantastic. We also took profits in Walmart. Uh, Walmart we got in uh, last week as well. And finally, we broke out into this gap, and that was a little bit of a win, 20%. We took it from $2 to $2.40. We'll keep our eyes on this if it continues to push up towards that 618 retracement off that uh, pre-earnings high there at 169.94. Something to keep an eye on. But big tech is definitely the, the key thing here as of late. Uh, one of the big, big ones is CRM, which... Got a top pick from Oppenheimer. Uh, looking for this to break out above the 270 level. Let me clear out this level so it doesn't confuse you. If we can break out of this 268, 270 level, that will send CRM Salesforce uh, up a little bit more. Uh, McDonald's is an interesting setup to keep an eye on. It's not quite there yet, but if we uh, get a push up beyond 299, which seems to be the trouble spot here for McDonald's, then we could get a nice 
price discovery mode like we've seen on NVIDIA. And speaking of NVIDIA, NVIDIA new lifetime highs hitting a high of 546. Remember, just because it's overbought doesn't mean it's got to come on down. And once things are in price discovery mode like this, then you don't want to step in front of it just like you don't want to catch a falling knife. So NVIDIA bulls continue to push up. It's the leader in AI. It's the golden child of AI and what it can do. So keep an eye on NVIDIA as it continues to move on forward, as well as Microsoft. Meta's in a breakout. Pan W got an upgrade uh, from Morgan Stanley. This is also nearing lifetime highs. Just needs to clear that 318 mark, and off we go. I'm still keeping an eye on FedEx. It continues to hold the daily 200 for now. Uh, it, like Once again, if it breaks down below this daily 200 or about that 244.50 mark, it could set up a nice little swing short. And then I also want to keep an eye on Berkshire Hathaway. Burt B getting some nice price action here at about the... Uh, Five three sixty nine thirty seven level. If we can break above that, that opens the door to three seventy one, and then again at lifetime highs at three seventy three thirty four. We got some financial institutions reporting earnings on Friday: Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, etc. Uh, so that could set the tone for earnings season for sure. And of course, PDD Pin Duo Duo remains set up. Remains pretty darn interesting here. Just needs to clear that one fifty one mark. And then we'd be looking at a, a target of about 154, 155 uh, for Pan W. So, uh, excuse me, for, for Pen Duo Duo. So, all in all, uh, another great day. Uh, Disney, we did take to the downside there once it broke below uh, our, tar our entry zone at 89.60. Uh, we only made about 16%. On that, we we took profits and then raised our stops up to break even, uh, but eventually got stopped out at that point. Uh, but if if Disney continues to show weakness, it has plenty of room to fall here down to about that 87 mark to retest support uh, down yonder. But overall, great day with Microsoft. It's been a good week with Nvidia and Microsoft and big tech in general. Once again, we got CPI tomorrow. It should be an interesting reading. Just because last week we got the strong jobs data as well as uh, higher than expected wage growth. Um, so we'll see how much that has imp impacted inflation going into tomorrow. Like I said, that comes in at 830. Be on your toes and guard on that. Uh, I'm not swinging heavy at this point. I want to see what this inflation report uh, may do. And we'll look for setups and swing positions from there. All right. Once again, Brian Farr, VP Stock Analytics with Stock Dads. I will see you guys tomorrow live trading. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.